Hello, thanks for joining us today on Arts 24, a look at some of the best exhibitions in Paris this season, starting with one of the most important abstract painters of her generation. She was born in Hong Kong, grew up in Indonesia, then London, where she trained as an artist in the 80s. She became part of the infamous generation known as YBAs, or Young British Artists, in the 90s, being shortlisted for the prestigious Turner Prize when she was 20 before becoming one of the youngest people to be elected to Britain's prestigious Royal Academy of Art at a decade later, age 37. Her work has been shown all over the world and she's regularly celebrated here in France. The Natalie Abadia Gallery in Paris has been exhibiting her paintings for the past 30 years. Hello, Fiona Ray. Hi. It's a pleasure to have you in the show. Now, you're in Paris for a new show at the Natalie Abadia Gallery called Messages. Yeah. I wanted to start by asking you, for around 40 years, you have been developing a body of work. Mm. What do you think your artistic message is, if there is one? Mm. Um, I think my artistic message is that painting is something that the viewer can look at and enjoy in their own individual way without needing to be told what to expect or to see or to read from them. Um, I chose the title Messages for my exhibition because I like that idea of setting up the expectation that it's something didactic or illustrative, but in fact it's abstract painting which leaves you free to wander. Now talk to me about your relationship with Paris because it does seem to have played quite an important role in your artistic journey. Yes, it's been very important. Um, I first exhibited with Natalie Abadia in 1994, 30 years ago, and um, We've had a very strong relationship ever since. Um, institutions in France have often shown my work and collected it, French collectors. So I feel very welcome here and, and very established, like a kind of um, quasi-French artist almost. Well, your exhibition, as we've talked about, is called Messages. It's on at um, the Natalie Abadi Gallery in Paris until March. There are, is a rich choice of exhibitions on this season here in Paris. I wonder, do you have a favourite art space here? Well, I haven't seen any of the exhibitions in Paris yet this trip, but um, I would say that my favourite art space in Paris is actually La Sainte Chapelle on the Ile de la Cité, which is actually a medieval chat. Well. 13th century chapel with incredible stained glass windows and it also does ex temporary exhibitions from time to time so I hope that counts as an art space. Oh. It's like walking into a Walt Disney film when you go upstairs and see the stained glass. It's amazing. Okay well that's definitely one um, for viewers to put on their list to go and visit. Have you heard of the Atelier de Lumière? In no Paris? I haven't. Well whatever the exhibition on there it is an incredible experience. From February, the gallery is travelling back to ancient Egypt, um, from gods to architecture to politics and commerce, all aspects of the ancient civilization will be explored in a video mapping spectacle. The Egypt of the pharaohs from Cheops to Ramses, um, the second is on until January 2025. And another exhibition everyone is talking about is the Mark Rothko um, retrospective at the Fondation um, Louis Vuitton. Um, he was one of the great American artists of the 20th century. And this show of more than 100 paintings is like a spiritual, it really is, experience. Um, here's the artist's son, Christopher Rothko, at the exhibition. It's so important to see my father's paintings in person, not on a screen. My father really wants to have a conversation with you face to face. And it's an emotional exchange. It is an exchange that is before language. And among the many other exhibitions um, to choose from, the Pompidou Centre will pay tribute to the Romanian sculptor Constantin Brancusi and bringing together nearly 200 sculptures, photos, drawings, films and archive documents. Um, this will be the largest French retrospective ever devoted to this giant of European sculpture. That starts at the end of March and it goes on until July. So I'm here in the studio with the British artist Fiona Ray, who has a new exhibition uh, here in Paris. Now your paintings are marked by a singular and constantly evolving aesthetic. Your work is instantly recognizable. How would you describe um, the new exhibition messages? Um, 
the, the new exhibition, uh, it's a new series of paintings where I've combined words and sentences with the language of abstraction. I thought it'd be interesting to take things from literature, poetry, films, the, the words associated with them, and see what would happen if I made them into abstract shapes, forms, colours, so that there'd be two language systems running side by side simultaneously, but not in an illustrative way. Well, you, as you said, been working with the Abadia Gallery um, for 30 years. Here's the executive director of the gallery, Mamiti Casales. She has this uh, fascinating capacity of, um, of always finding the perfect and the most precise balance in her work, uh, meaning that uh, it's like a clock mechanism. Uh, in each canvas, she uh, adds on the surface many signs, colored signs often, and she managed to, to at the same time bring a composition that is playful and uh, very, very light and voila, joyful. It includes the viewer, which is always something nice. How important is it for you to include the viewer? Uh, I think it's really important because it's me, the painting, and the viewer in the end. Um, I, I can't, I'm, I'm not interested in um, forcing anything on anybody, but um, I like the idea that the viewer will follow the, the passages in the paintings, follow the, the, the pretend stories, the stories that go nowhere, the images, and, and make up their own experience from it. I really love um, the titles of the works. Thank you. Some <laughs> refer to a Shakespearean phrase, others to a Disney cartoon, a comic strip, um, or poetry. Uh, yeah. For example, all those moments will be lost in time. Teach me to hear mermaids um, singing. That is not what I meant at all. Can you make no use of your discontent? Um, where do these titles come from and how important are they to the work? Um, they're it's funny, they're important to me in the moment of making it. They're, they're things that have resonated me, with me for one reason or another. For example, um, all, these mo all those moments will be lost in time is one of the last lines in Blade Runner. Um, so for me, it's a poetic moment that then I can uh, re-experience in the studio uh, making an abstract painting and see whether there's something to be had from having that in mind while making, making my marks and gestures and uh, shapes, colours and forms. I wanted to um, talk about one piece in particular. This is what the producer chose because she liked the title. Um, have an animal sidekick, um, you're a princess. Yeah, that title's from a Disney cartoon and it's actually half of a sentence, which, which is, I guess is deliberately a bit gnomic, a little bit mysterious. Um, but I like the idea of things that one might associate with low culture making their way into something as high culture, in my view, as, as abstract painting, that it is a very inclusive space in which all kinds of things can take their place. And you've spoken before about being inspired partly by drawings of um, Dr. Zeus. Yes, Dr. Very Zeus. Much so, Can you tell yeah. me about that and some of your other references? Yeah. Well, I think like most young children, I was introduced to cartoons at an early age. And I think in a way, it's probably my first experience of art, as it is for most people. And so it resonates for me as an expressive art form with, with the kind of the humour and, and yet the seriousness that's possible in a cartoon. I, I've never found it to be anything other than... Um, a, a very exciting mode of expression. So I guess that I often find that shapes and things from cartoons make their way into my paintings. It, it feels a very natural part of my vocabulary. I wanted to talk a bit um, about the past. I know you, okay. want, you want to focus yeah, on the yeah, present, sure. but in 1988, um, you participated in um, Freeze, an art exhibition organised by Damien Hurst in London, yeah. Docklands. Um, that helped launch a generation of artists um, who became known as the Young British Artists or YBAs. What do you think of now when you remember that time? Um, I, I feel very fond of that time and that group of people. Um, it was a group of friends and acquaintances that um, ebbed and flowed as new people showed up. And um, I think there was an energy to it that meant that we all kind of fed off each other and um, supported each other. So, yeah, very lucky to be in part of it. And how do you think the art change has the art scene has changed and evolved since then in the past 30 years. I think things were smaller then, which often gives it an intensity and focus. I think that probably what's exciting now is there's the, the disparity and the widening of opportunities, whereas when, when we emerged, there was very little for artists, especially young artists, and, and perhaps our experience helped change things for, 
the generations that came afterwards. Is there a young artist um, at the moment that you're interested in? Yes, actually, there's a British artist called Rachel Jones, and I saw one of her paintings at the Haywards uh, at the Hayward Gallery a, a couple of years ago. And I think she's a very interesting abstract painter um, with, with a kind of image that emerges but but doesn't dominate. So something I would be very interested in. With and also with a very uh, interesting title, the one I saw was called um, "Lick Your Teeth, They So Clutch," which I think has just the right amount of intrigue and kind of humour to it to draw one in. Okay, well, I'll look her up. Um, in previous interviews I've read with you, um, the question that always seems to come up is, why did you stick to painting? Because um, so many other people sort of diversify and try other mediums of art. Why did you stick to painting? Um, I, I have tried other mediums. I'm always trying other things. But in the end, I always come back to painting because it's such an expressive art form. It's so ancient. It's the relationship between your body, your mind, and the, and the materiality. So there's something very direct and engaging about it. It, and in my view, it remains as relevant an art form as anything. And throughout all of art history, um, who's your favourite painter? Oh, wow. Uh, OK, off, off the top of my head, um, well, probably Picasso. I mean, in the end, there's such a, a, a breadth and variety of, of the human experience in those images and such an amazing deafness of touch. Just fabulous. Picasso. Fiona Ray, we always end our show with our guest's cultural pick of the moment. What have you chosen for us? Um, I've chosen an a Apple TV series set in London called Slow Horses, um, starring Gary Oldman and Kristen St Scott Thomas with a script by Will Smith. It's, it's adapted from some spy novels, but the reason why I'm recommending it is that it's a picture of London, which you don't often see, but which feels very real and very genuine to those of us who've lived in London for decades. A kind of seedy, scruffy, not cleaned up place with kind of grubby cafes and, the, and people hanging around in them. It's very funny and exciting as well. Okay, another one to add to the list. Fiona Ray, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. It's been a pleasure to have you. Fiona Ray's messages is on at the gallery Natalie Obadia until March. We're going to leave you now with Slow Horses, available on Apple TV+. Thanks for watching. See you next time. There are men outside with guns. Some backup might be handy. Well, I'm busy. Okay, thanks. I'm sure the situation will resolve itself. They might fight. Betray us. Justice is coming their way. We have to limit the collateral damage. Everyone in that facility is coming out in a body bag. You're smiling. Yeah, I feel alive, don't you? What would you have done if I'd have killed every one of them? If they threatened to kill you, on the other hand, I'd buy them a beer and the bullets. Oh, now you get it. <sighs>In 2016, Yaya Jame, the Gambia's president, was defeated at the polls after 22 years in power. But the terror unleashed by his government remains etched in people's memories. The 22 years of Jame's regime or more was more or less of a very brutal regime where people's rights were trampled on. <laughs> Since the end of the dictatorship, numerous accusations against Jame and his militia have emerged. The current government has uh, promulgated certain laws that can try crimes of torture. I'm very hopeful that uh, very soon we will have justice. Watch Yaya Jame's The Gambia Revisited on France 24 and France24.com.